Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to focus on the present suspects, and there's many. That is the parade of Trump associates and confidants headed to courtrooms and legal proceedings as we speak. Now, Manafort, he's on trial for tax evasion with the potential to flip on Trump or spend a lot of time behind bars, most likely. Michael Cohen continuing to signal he either has or will flip on Trump. And word late this afternoon that an aide to dirty trickster Roger Stone now has a date with Robert Mueller. A judge ruling that Stone aide Andrew Miller must testify before the special counsel and rejecting claims that Mueller's appointments was illegitimate. This would seem to ramp up pressure on Stone to flip on Trump as well. But the real focus today, that was on Paul Manafort as his tax evasion trial shifted into high gear in Northern Virginia. Andrew, give a recap about the day's events. Well, Rich, prosecutors today switched from focusing on the wealth and spending of Manafort to some cash flow problems that he had that could supply a motive for tax evasion. Prosecutors showing off more of Manafort's lavish spending, including a $20,000 karaoke system for his house and nearly half a million dollars on landscaping, including a flower bed in his yard that formed the letter M with most of the spending coming from offshore and foreign bank accounts. Then the money apparently ran out. Multi-million dollar losses from Manafort's consulting firm, a bookkeeper who pleaded with Manafort for money just to pay his bills, and later the first evidence of tax evasion, financial documents showing Manafort's firm made $4.5 million in 2015. Problem is, the income that they reported to the IRS was only $400,000. Meanwhile, more drama over a possible trump Mueller interview. Trump reportedly pushing to sit with the special counsel over the objections of his lawyers. Trump reportedly believes he can convince Mueller that Mueller's investigation is a witch hunt. That would be a neat trick. That's a direct quote from Trump aides. Mueller has reportedly offered to reduce the time that they would discuss possible obstruction of justice, but insists that Trump answers questions in person. Team Trump wants any interview to focus solely on things that happened before Trump became president which would exclude anything related to obstruction. More on obstruction, this Trump tweet from yesterday morning where he calls on Jeff Sessions to end the Mueller probe, already being seen by some as more evidence of obstruction, Trump pressuring his attorney general to end an investigation into him and his campaign. But Trump's attorney says tweets, they just can't be evidence of obstruction. Obstruction by tweet is not something that I think works real well. Generally, uh, obstruction is a secret, it's clandestine, it's corrupt. Uh, you don't want the evidence out in the public so it can be used against you. And I've looked at all those tweets and they don't amount to anything but the man complaining about an unfair investigation. Sarah Sanders also responding, trying to downplay the significance of the president's tweets, a defense that would seem to help buttress the president against obstruction by tweet. It's not an order, it's the president's opinion, and it's ridiculous that all of the corruption and dishonesty that's gone on with the launching of uh, the witch hunt, the president wants to, has watched this process play out. Rich? Andrew, thank you very much. For more, let's turn to our man in all things Trump and Russia, former federal prosecutor Roland Riappel. Roland, as always, thank you for the time. Let's first start off in Virginia uh, before we get to the president and the Manafort trial. More than um, having expensive, if not garish, tastes, um, we've learned that Manafort also was belly up by 16 and he was lying to the banks and the creditors. Um, suddenly he became quasi flush again. What is Mueller laying out here in the first couple days? And do you think it leads to testimony from Gates or will the star witness not even get to the stand? It, it's it, what Mueller is laying out here in the first few days is the groundwork for both a this very strong tax counts in the in the case and the bank fraud counts. The tax counts are based on the fact that uh, Manafort paid for all these exotic things by making transfers from foreign bank accounts that he did not disclose to his accountant. And his accountant testified to that today. And uh, the fact that she had no idea there was all this money offshore is really sayonara for Manafort on the tax counts. Um, the fact that all of this income uh, was left off of the ba various bank uh, loan applications uh, that Manafort made and that uh, he made all the misrepresentations to the banks that have been testified about, that's the, the groundwork for the bank fraud counts. And now, uh, you know, today the government said it did intend to call Gates perhaps as early as tomorrow or early next week. Um, and I think they're calling him just to let Manafort try to take a shot at him 
uh, and see if he can in any way discredit the story that they've built up over the last few days, my guess is uh, no. It seems to me that Manafort is already in very deep trouble. Do you think at the end, um, if the case is as solid as most thinks it is, Roland, that Manafort uh, cuts his losses and tries to cut a deal, or is he just counting on a pardon from the president? I, I think Manafort is terrified of the Russians. I think he's scared to death that they'll kill him if he cooperates with Mueller. I think that is the only thing holding him back at this point. And it's very hard to say what, what will happen um, if he's that frightened that he hasn't sort of gotten on Team America yet. Um, it's hard to say whether he'll do it after a conviction. You know, Rule 35 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure allows a defendant to cooperate with the government for benefit in connection with his sentence for any time up to a year after the sentence is imposed. So he'll have some time to cooperate still after his conviction if it goes down. But I don't know what he's been waiting for. Mm. I really don't. Speaking of cooperating, um, you get this um, tango here. One day the president won't answer questions. Now he will. It seems that Mueller, his offer, he's willing to more limit the questions, even allow some to be answered in writing. Uh, what's going on with this tango? I know you're on record as saying that Trump will never get in front, but he even said that, uh, at least those close to him, that the president believes if he can just get Mueller in the room, he can kind of contort Mueller to come away to his way of thinking. I'd love to see that, but is this just yeah. all smoke and no substance? I, in, in my view, it's sort of public relations work from both sides. Mueller wants to make himself appear as reasonable as possible before he has to serve a subpoena on Trump to get his testimony. And Trump uh, is doing his best to discredit Mueller uh, and make a show of being willing to be interviewed uh, because he knows that's good PR for him. So I think both sides are kind of using the process as public relations. I, I just can't imagine that any competent lawyer is going to allow Trump to sit down with Mueller. So I think we're going to end up with a subpoena at the end of the process whenever that is. And then who the heck knows what happens from there. But on the subject of Twitter, yeah. the president really clearly to my and I think most Americans view said basically Sessions not only do I still hate your face here but um, maybe unrecuse yourself if that's even conceivable and stop this um, you know clown car investigation by Mueller I want this shut down immediately then they try and do the cleanup in all three and they say oh this was just an opinion but in in fact is someone's tweets admissible and couldn't you argue pretty fairly I would think that this is exhibit A of obstruction? Yeah, I, you know, the tweets, whatever, if Donald Trump were to end up a defendant in either a court of law or perhaps in an impeachment proceeding where the rules of evidence applied, anything he says could be offered against him by the prosecution as evidence going to his intent. And it's hard to think of better evidence uh, of his intent to try to obstruct justice when he fired Comey uh, than his, you know, desire, which he's expressed over and over again, to see this inquiry come to an end. Why is he whining like this unless he's terrified of what Mueller would find? And that is evidence that he intended to yep. fire Comey to derail the Russian investigation back in the day. You know, one thing, uh, we touched on this briefly, and I, uh, there's been so much news, I think it's almost forgotten, but the indictments of the 12 Russians and the five Americans that weren't named, although a couple of the names we figured out, uh, and we have hints to maybe some of the others, it spoke not just to the conspiracy in the run-up, but also the ongoing conspiracy. And what we saw today with the headlines from our intelligence chiefs that the Russians aren't planning but are actively trying to both corrupt the midterm elections right now and also sow discord in the U.S. <clears throat> Talk about the significance, because that seems to me, Roland, to be the underlying thread here, that there was coordination uh, before the Trump Tower meeting, and since there's been coordination, we don't know with whom yet, but the Russians have been working with Americans. It's not just 12 lonely guys in a basement in Moscow. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely correct, Richard. I mean, there is a real fear at this point 
that there are some American politicians, Dana Rohrabacher from California is one of the people that's frequently mentioned in this context, there are American politicians who are willing to uh, conspire with the Russians if it will help them to win. And it appears that this conspiracy of working with the Russians by some Republican politicians to win uh, is ongoing. There's, uh, you know, that would explain to some, uh, to some great degree why the Republican Party has been so unwilling to do anything about this Russian mm. uh, conspiracy and, and the Russian interference in our election process. Why are they not doing more? I think it's because at least some of them realize that it's to their advantage and they are working with the Russians. And it's even possible Could some be. of the folks who are part of the campaign have been continuing to do so. But my final question with a minute I got left, Roland, is the president, even by his standards, has been freaking out in this past week on Twitter and every other platform. And there's a lot of theories as to why, but you from the beginning have said follow the money, whether it's Cohen and what he may be able to testify, or even the former um, CFO, uh, the Trump organization for more than 20-something years, it's mentioned on that audio tape that Cohen recorded. It's my sense, maybe, that now, forget about seeing the returns, now he's going to be talking to people to know how the money was spent, where it came from, and the rest. Do you think that's at the root for why Trump is so particularly on edge and vocal like we've seen in the last week or so a absolutely i think with uh you know the uh the approach to alan weisselberg cohen uh all the russian money you see uh pouring into manafort all of this kind of stuff goes to uh show that trump was really controlled uh financially by the russians Trump sees this coming out and he's terrified of it for several reasons. First, it shows he's not the billionaire he claims he was. He's basically bought and bought by the Russians. Second, it shows that he's not a legitimate president because the Russians essentially have bought the election for him. And, and third, it shows that he's being controlled by them now. These are all inferences that can be drawn from this evidence about the money that has flowed to him and people around him from the Russians, and none of it is good news for Donald Trump. Roland, as always, um, it is never dull, but I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it, Richard. Good to be with you. When we come back, everyone, she built her reputation on studying and railing against corruption in Albany. Now, Zephyr Teachout, she's running to become New York State's top attorney. After the break, we're going to speak live with Teachout on her campaign and on pushing back against Trump and more.